And um, I showed you a physical model of the real number system yesterday. We talked about the different sets within the, the real number system. But I have to tell you, I don't think one lesson on it is enough to have it memorized, nor do I feel that this is anything you need to memorize. As long as you understand it and you have notes to go back to, that's good enough for this topic. There are some things in math that I want you to get really good at. You're going to be able to do them. Even if you saw this math in 10 years, you probably have some muscle memory that would help you do it. This is not one of those things. This is, do you understand it in the moment? And can we get some notes that if you see this again in a few months, you'll be like, wait, I can go look that up. Does that make sense for the notes here? OK. Also, some of you were like, the card sort. I think after we do this, going back to that card sort will make more sense, because you'll have something to reference. I like to think of notes as something we are taking for our future selves. There is, like I said, there's certain things that I'm going to want you to get really, really good at. But for the most part, in this class in particular, because it's Algebra 1, next year you take Geometry, and then you take Algebra 2, it's going to be really important for you to have good notes. Because there will be things in Algebra 2 your teacher expects you to have understood, but you may not have it straight at the front of your memory. And that's why these notes will be important. With that said, this is going to get glued into a notebook. I'm not ready for you to have those notebooks yet because of where we're going to store them in the room and my storage containers aren't here. The notebooks are here. They're on that card. But I don't want to give them out until we're ready and we're going to have other things we glue in the front. Okay? Fair enough? So we start with the smallest set of numbers and it is called the natural numbers. Does anybody remember from yesterday when I called this set of numbers as a nickname? The counting numbers. And if you recall, that's because these are the numbers that are the first ones learned by little kids. And I'm just going to highlight the outside edge or sh surround it in a color. It doesn't matter what color. This isn't color coded. You're just showing the different sets. And the smallest number in the set is 1. And they go on and on and on. I just moved to that. Is that a little bit better? And I apologize, this is, does not appear to be the best pen for this. I've got some ones at home I think will show up better in writing, so I will have them here for next time. Okay, what comes after the natural numbers? Do we think we remember? Whole numbers. Whole numbers are defined as the natural numbers and zero. Everything that we see in natural numbers <coughs> is also included in the whole numbers. Then we get quite a bit larger. This little set is all of the numbers, like I said, smallest number is one, but it goes on and on and on. The whole numbers, even though this box looks bigger, it really only added one more number to the set. This next set adds a whole bunch more. It practically doubles what's there. And its name, do we recall? Integers. It's a really messy I I wrote. Integers. The definition of integers, 
and I'm doing this from memory, so don't quote me on exact words, but it, it's basically the whole numbers and their opposites. The only number that is in the integers that does not have an opposite is zero. I really don't recall what I told you all last year about myself and my learning style because it was such a weird year, but you will hear me say it over and over and over again this year, I am a visual learner. And when I think about integers and whole numbers and natural numbers, I, I picture the number line, which we talked about yesterday, but I also picture the coordinate plane. On the coordinate plane, anybody know what we call the very center? It's the origin. And the origin is zero comma zero. That's its coordinates. These are whole numbers. These are whole numbers that are positive. Over here we have negatives and negatives, and you can see on the, the um, coordinate plane, just like if you can see on that number line, the whole numbers and their opposites, and zero is right in the center of it all. On the number line, zero is that place where you're either going up or down, on here, the zero's in the middle, right in the center. Okay, and now we come out to what was my biggest square shape yesterday. Yeah, these are called the rational numbers. And what's important to remember about rational numbers is that the word ratio is in them. Anything that can be seen as a ratio would be included in the rational numbers. Nothing too fancy, just color code or putting some color around it to separate it. What is a ratio? Well, something like that is a ratio. A fraction is in ratio form. This is also something that could be written as a ratio. negative 0 0.75. That would be negative 3 fourths. On the number line, it would be between 0 and negative 1. Right? Um, whole numbers can be here. And I want you to think about that. If I put the number 7, it's a rational number because I could write it as 7 over 1. Remember that little fact that all whole numbers have an invisible one underneath them? That means that 7 over 1, or the whole number 7, is also in integers. It's also in whole numbers. And it's also in natural numbers. So some of these numbers, like if they were already in this box, they stay in this box. We just, quite frankly, as we learn more about math, learn more about how they can look. For instance, guess what I could put in this box? Little kids counting are not going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, square root of 25. But what is the square root of 25? It's, now, it's a natural number then. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer and it's also a rational number. I 
think that's probably, oh, um, what about division? Here's where I'm going to use a little bit of my color coding. I just wrote up here 12 over 6. That's equal to 2. That means it's a natural number. It's a whole number. It's an integer. And it's also a rational number. Now we're going to move to the other side. If this big giant pink box was the rational numbers, do you all remember what I showed as my rectangle? Irrational. And we joked about this yesterday. When we think about rational, or when you hear people say, oh my gosh, that person's just so irrational, they're meaning like they don't make sense. But that's not what this means for numbers. It means it cannot be a ratio. Probably the most famous irrational number is pi. Another irrational number would be the square root of 2. And let's keep that as a thought for a second. Why is the square root of 2 over here, but the square root of 25 is over here? Well, square roots are the opposites of exponents, right? So we're talking about 1 squared would be 1, 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared is, oops, huh. I just made a classic mistake, 9, um, 4 squared, 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. What are the opposites of those? So since these two facts are related, and I apologize, I didn't realize you couldn't see the whole thing. Somehow it's a little crooked. There we go. Since these two facts are related, when I throw up there the square root of 2, it's somewhere between these two, if we're picturing a number line. Right? Because it's bigger than the square root of 1, it's smaller than the square root of 4, but there's nothing between 1 and 2 that we could square that's going to turn out to be exactly 2. So that's what makes this irrational. We could do the same thing with the square root of 12. Do you think about 12 as something we multiply? Our brains are used to being like 3 times 4, 2 times 6. There's lots of ways to get 12. But there's no way to multiply the same two numbers even in decimal form, and have them come out exactly to 12. So the square root of 12 is somewhere between 3 and 4. It exists as a real number, but it's not a rational number. Is it starting to make sense? Okay. That brings up a question of what else could be an irrational number? Famously, decimals that have patterns 
that cause them to keep going and going are irrational also. Pi is really one of those. It's a decimal that goes on and on and on and never repeats. We don't have any exponents on here. What if I did three, let's do it on my dry erase, find some space here. What if we did three to the third power? What would that equal? Three times three times three, I heard somebody say it, is nine times three, which is 27. So three to the third power is the same as saying 27 in a fancier way. Where does 27 fit here? It's in the natural numbers actually. Because three to the third power is equal to 27, 27 would be a natural number and a whole number and an integer and a rational number. It's in all of them. It's kind of like having that friend who's got like six middle names because all of their grandparents' middle their name is part, you know what I mean? Like you just, they're part of all of it. They get all of it. So that is our notes on the real number system. Any questions before I turn off the recording for it? Okay, then I am gonna leave it up here. Um, for those of you who want to make sure you got things down, I know some of that went slow, but some of it went fast, and you may not have caught it all. But I'd also like you to take it and go to your card sort from Desmos yesterday and see if you can improve. Don't lose this paper, we will be gluing